in a quaint forgotten corner of my town's crappy old flea market, my curiosity was piqued by an unmarked VHS tape lying beneath a layer of dust and neglect. Upon closer inspection, a note scrawled in barely legible handwriting revealed its contents. Meet the Feebles, Director's Cut. The original 1988 movie by Peter Jackson was a bizarre puppet spectacle I was familiar with, but the notion of a director's cut was new to me. It made me happy I'd gone to the flea market despite my parents saying they didn't want me going. The place was apparently a bit too grungy for them. With an almost reverential care, I took the tape home, eager to delve into what I anticipated would be an extended version of the movie's already notorious content. I had to watch it in my parents' room, that being the only place with the VCR still. Kind of awkward, but they were out anyway. I just hoped they didn't come home while I was watching the movie in their room. The player was a relic as much as the tape itself was. It was one of those TV VCR combos. It whirred to life as the screen flickered into action with a familiar opening scene. As the movie progressed, however, it was pretty obvious that this was a pretty rough copy with static randomly breaking up the video out of nowhere and random blips of sound blaring through in the middle of scenes. About halfway through, a soft, unintelligible whispering seemed to admit from one of the longer static breaks. Despite the mounting unease, my fascination compelled me to continue. But as I did, the film spiraled into mostly static and unintelligible colors and sounds, which became more and more off-putting. A little annoyed by this, I tried to pop the tape out and put it away. However, the inside of the tape had gotten totally wrapped up in the VCR, leaving the VHS seemingly destroyed and stuck inside. The weird thing was that the movie would still somewhat play. I just couldn't seem to get the thing out. I had no idea what to do at this point. So after a few attempts, I just left it in there, hoping my parents wouldn't attempt to use it and find out I had broken their VCR. They pretty much never watched their TV in there anyways. Later that night, though, those whispers I had heard emitting from the static invaded my dreams, along with random convoluted images of the puppets from the movie and random laughing echoes. The days following, my viewing of the tape were fraught with this weird feeling like I was being watched. It's hard to describe, but I couldn't shake it. I then began to notice weird things going on around the house. The first was when I found strands of what looked like colorful yarn in places no yarn had any business being. On the bathroom sink, coiled on the kitchen counter, even tangled in the brushes of our vacuum cleaner. It was peculiar to say the least, but nothing compared to the morning I discovered two shiny buttons at the bottom of my cereal bowl. They were the kind you'd find on a coat or, more fittingly, the eyes of a handcrafted puppet. My parents, meanwhile, seemed oblivious to these oddities, or at least they pretended to be. However, I didn't see them much, as if they were intentionally avoiding me. One evening, as I lay awake in bed, I heard the soft clink of what sounded like needles. Creeping down the hallway, I peered through a crack in my parents' bedroom door to find them in the light of the TV, their hands moving rhythmically, sewing something. Seeming to hear the door creak, my mom turned towards me, peering through the crack in the door. What are you doing up, honey? She said. A bit weirded out, I just turned and went back to my room. The morning after, I got up early, awoken by more of the strange nightmares. However, it seemed like my parents were already awake in the kitchen. They didn't make breakfast often, but when they did, I definitely didn't want to miss it. So I quickly headed across the house but slowed as I approached the kitchen and noticed a bloody knitting needle on the floor. I looked up and could not even interpret what was in front of my eyes. There, at the breakfast table, sat my parents, transformed, their human flesh replaced with fabric and felt, their eyes now black, glossy buttons that seemed to stare into nothingness through long strands of yarn now attached to their heads imitating hair. My mom turned to face me in a jerking motion, 
Her mouth, partially sewn, began to speak in this weird, high-pitched tone. You love the movie you brought home. Want to watch it again? I ran out of the kitchen and left my house immediately. I haven't been back in weeks and have been staying at a motel in town, running up an insane credit card bill. I don't know what happened to my parents or even what to do at this point. All I could think of was to try and tell others what happened, which is what I'm doing. However, as the days pass, the nightmares keep on coming back into my mind, and now they are becoming more and more clear. They're of me starting to put patches on top of my skin, and for some reason I can't even comprehend. Yesterday, I bought myself a sewing kit. <laughs>